going to work. Kind of adjust it a little bit, maybe. Well, welcome to the room. I'm just setting it up. We had told people we'd be on for sub clock, but had a little glit. Let's see. Um... I don't know what's going on here. There we go. I hope everybody's okay tonight. I really do. Hard. Y'all, they said I'm not losing my hair. I am. See, it's not really growing back in places. See? It's thin. They said it wouldn't. I've still got all of my things. There's that butterfly. Look how pretty it looks like it's just floating in there. And I'm going to go in a little bit and put the epoxy on them. There's the pink one. Now this one, the butterfly and the flowers were together. On this one, I put the flowers on the other side. There we go. There's two, two decals. And this is two decals. There you go. I couldn't get it earlier. There it is. Look how beautiful that holographic is with the things on the side. Okay. The two peacocks. See if I can get there you go. Right there. Something different. I haven't put that design up. And I haven't used these designs either. Something feels like I'm looking to see if I could get a rainbow or something in there, but I couldn't find nothing to actually go in there. Not even some flowers. So that's gonna be like that. And then I've got the gold. And I've got the red. Red's upside down. Wait a minute. Is it? Yeah. There's the red. Then the black has the hourglass on it. Sand glass, whatever. And then those are the colors. So we're going to go in a little bit. But we had promised y'all we'd be back on. So I didn't go stream yard. I'm going to have a little bit of problem. Here I can control the, or we can control the trolls better. Hello in the background. Hope you're having a nice night. We were talking about cryptids. That's it. And I thought I'd just get back on here for a few minutes and see if any of those come back into the room. That wanted us in here. If not, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off. I want to watch a movie. I've been watching the series Jericho. About the bombs and stuff. And um, we bought it a couple of years ago from the movie Voodoo. And I think Pandora's picked it up now. They have a lot of movies like that. Sometimes I just like to go back and see the series of it. Um, sometime we'll start watching a movie and all of a sudden it's like, uh, -uh not, not right for us. Forget it. I can't believe my hair is so thin and I just washed it. But I take what God, our creator gives me and I try to work as much as I can with it. Been a long hard day. Going to family and then some offices. Offices, some stores to find something I needed. Then the pour down rain. Ugh. 
I guess I should be working on my owls. That's what somebody had asked me, to see the owls. Let me see if I can find them without spilling anything here. I have them snuck up under here because I want to show the decals. Okay. That's one of them. Look how pretty those big eyes made them instead of just putting golden brown on them. This one. Oh. It stuck. Yep. There we go. That's one of the others. Now I've got the brown on here and I've got the white and then the baby blue. Wait a minute. I know there's another one somewhere. It's, uh -huh. Found ya. There's another one I put the big eyes on. I have the gold on that one. And then I haven't done the brown yet. That's what I'm working on now. Because this was only half. But aren't those going to be pretty? I want to hang it like this. Like this. Let's see if I can. There you go. Put a hole and put an S hook and put them like that. I don't know if that's going to show. It has too much bling and bling to it, but I want to hang them one under the other. I may put two of them and two of them, or I may put all four. So that's what I've been working on. I want to see if I can sneak it. There it is. And there it is. And of course, guess what I did? I spilled the seeds. Not a lot of them. Just a few. Hey, I'm a crafter. I can do any kind of mistake I want. If I don't like the cover up, I throw it away. Or if it's an art painting or something like that, I take it and I'll spray it black or white and start all over. Not quite as bad as throwing it away. So, well, I guess the others, I guess they want me to be on StreamYard, but I'm not paying no money for that. Not when I have to pay for YouTube. Oh, I almost dropped my whole bag of beads. <laughs> ah. Don't we all do that? There's nothing I can do. Let me see if I can. that better? Ooh, that's bright for me, though. Let me get this together. Hold on a minute. I just got this light this week, Eric. Okay, give me a chance. I know it goes down. There we go. Is that any better? Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's, uh, Wolf got it so we can start, we're making a, a place where we can start doing our sales again and stuff. This is one of the lights like uh, Jeremy and all those other people have that you set it away from you. But I need the light so I can see See, like, even if I put on my glasses right now, I wonder if I could see the letters. No, they're blurred to me, so I would have to put it back on the bright light. Yeah, well, it's going to do that. I have oily, oily, oily skin. I've always had it. And with all the medication and stuff, my skin shines. I even have a powder base. Look at my arms. 
how they shine. They said when I was born, I was born with white, white, white hair and no color pigmentation to my skin and only dark brown eyes. They said if it wouldn't have been for the brown eyes, they would have thought me being an albino. Good thing I wasn't. I'm dual DNA. I think that was bad enough. Mm. That makes me think. Maybe that's why my skin, I within five minutes, my skin, if I go outside in the bright sun, it starts getting red, 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 and it's wanting to blister. If I lower the camera, yep. <laughs> this is the highest the camera go instead of lower. I don't know how how we could do that. Will said this week he's going to work on it. Number one, the light. See, the light will go up, but then the camera is fixed on the light. You can't move it off the light. And um, the other one I had, I could move my light to the side and all that, but then it would cast a shadow on anything I was doing going down. So we're trying. We're trying. Um, the others want to talk about some more cryptid and stuff. And sorry, I got in late and all that, you know. Um, we had things to do that we had to finish up. And, um, that's the way it happened, you know. Eric, can I ask you a question? Are you new to YouTube or is this just a new name for you? Now, if I lower the camera, see, it would put, put it right in my face. See, like that. And then it'd be worse. So I have to take it. Maybe that'll be okay. I'm still pale. Okay. I'm still a pale complexion. Very pale. I have low blood platelets. I'm fighting cancer. And they have to... Anytime you start seeing me with dark, 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 almost blackish gray rings up underneath my eyes means it's time for me to go in and get some more blood. That's why I hadn't shown myself a few days ago and just showed what I was doing on my craft work. I don't like showing my face when it's that dark of a ring. So, where are you hail from? USA, Canada? I sure do. Tell me which ones you want, and I can tell you the price of them. Well, they cost me about $5, just $5, and then I usually double it, and that'd be $10 a set, and if it comes with the little thing, that's extra for you, and then whatever it costs to, um, to mail it. But I can only mail to the main 48 states. It costs too much. It's like $25 to mail a set. A Guinness decal. Okay, Marilyn. Um, look it up on your computer or your phone and then post the URL in here. In the uh, I'd have to probably print it up. Hold on a minute. I'm trying to copy this. And let's see if I can find a decal like that. Man, they have a lot of them. Um, I think I could. Okay. This is, it may be too big. Let's see. Um, 
Oh, wait a minute, I gotta go back there. Let me see if I can get the... Nope, can't use that because it's copyrighted. Ugh. It's copyrighted, Eric. That would be illegal for me to do. I know. Um, I may be able to write the company and tell them that I'd like to do some coasters. They may, just may, give me an opportunity to do that. Because this, yeah, it's um, copyrighted. Yep. Uh, you know what? I might be able to do it. Let me get with them Monday. Get back with me, okay? Leave a message in here or something. Wolf may be able to go see if they have any beer around here. And we'll throw the beer out. We don't drink, sorry. We throw the beer out, then he can soak it in some the bottle with warm water inside, and the glue may come off, or I can use my heat gun, take the label off the bottle. Then I can use the use it to make one. If you want four of them, why don't you? <laughs> they can send them to me, and then I'll make them and send them to you. Uh, that's the only way I can think of. Yeah, I'll send it with the coaster. Yeah, that'd be probably be flat by time. Because <laughs> we have, okay, we're going to have to open the bottle. We pour it into another one, close it. It's illegal to ship beer like that. Okay. Um, or coolers or whatever they got. Like I said, we don't drink. <laughs> so. We would have to take the bomb, put hot water inside to loosen up the glue where the stamp is on. If the stamp, and let me see again, if any of it has, let me see. They do have some stickers, though. Which means, okay, they have the black background with the white letters and the gold harp. Or they have the white background with the black letters and gold harp. Then they have, oh, wow. Uh, red writing, somebody's signature up underneath it. There's so many. Why don't you do this? This is my email address. I had taken it down, but too many people want to order things. I'm going to put it up here. Do not, do not mistake my email for the fake one going around instead of a zero two zero two two they're putting two capital o the letter two two so if you look and find out which one you like send me the url there and put eric never shuts up okay put decal and then give me the link and i can go in and i can Look and see if I can print it up or if I can just order a few decals to put on the coasters. Black, the one with the black background. Okay. But there's three of them. <laughs> you need to go look and see which one. Now, see, my uncle was said slits. Slits? Slits? With something like that. The one with the beer with the S. Oh, he couldn't do with that. Dad, it was 
Budweiser completely. And my grandfather was Irish whiskey. He'd take his cigars, gently take it, the cellophane off of it. He'd roll the cigar in the whiskey. He put it on a screen like you put on a window or something, put it out in the sun and let it heat up. And then he'd carefully put it back in the the sleeve, tape it up so it would stay, you know, wouldn't dry out. And he'd smoke his cigars. He smelled like whiskey and cigars all the time. So you help. I can get something made for you. Yeah. Hello, everybody in the background. I hope you're having a nice night. Um, I guess I'm going to go ahead and go off. I don't want to be on here that long. Um, but I'm glad I did come up. Eric, I hope I can help you. Um, now I could have gotten all the labors you want if it was anything from Budweiser. <laughs> we got a plant here, a uh, bottling plant here, but, uh, Nope, that and Coke. I don't know if the hurricane took the Coca-Cola plant down or not. I never thought about going to these different places and asking if they have their little stickers or something that I could buy just a few of and put in coasters. Or make, say, give me a stack of coast, uh, stickers and I'll make you four coasters and I'll bring them back to you and you'll see what I'm doing. Hey, good advertisement for them. They may even give me the stickers. I'm going to try on the Budweiser. And like I said, if Coca-Cola was still here, I could get the Coca-Cola products. I know Pepsi's not here no more. Their building went in Hurricane Rita. We've had a lot of damage since, since 2005. We had Hurricane Rita, then Gustav and Ike. And then Francis kind of sideswapped us. Then we had Laura and Delta, one after the other, a month apart. Laura came in from the south. Delta came just on the east of us, and I mirrored here and went. Phew. Yeah, I survived a lot. I even survived Hurricane Audrey. Audra. Audrey. I have a few. I have that book. I need to look it up again. I tried to take a few pictures. I have them on there. But, I mean, you see people up, water up to their waist. Um, in Cameron, we're in Calcasieu, but in Cameron Parish, back then, they didn't have the little seal thing where you put the name and information or all that. And the caskets in the late 50s didn't. They weren't still very good like they are today. And uh, Zeb Johnson, one of the owners that had Johnson's Funeral Home here, you now his son runs it, but uh, he was telling us one time when he came to mom and dad's anniversary party that they were talking about Hurricane Audrey and that they had hundreds and hundreds of caskets that had opened and dead bodies all over. For three years, they were still finding bodies in the marsh. All they could do was put in a plastic bag and rebury it, but they didn't know who, what, when, and where. And I think, I know it's so sad, all those family members and everything. And then, see, the water came in, then it went out. And I'm sure a lot of it went out to the sea because we're only about 30 minutes drive from, oh, I know my daddy said he worked that, and it wasn't pleasant at all. Now, see, we lived. When you're going up to 10, now I'm mirrored. My door is supposed, this door right here, it's on the opposite side. It's on this side. <laughs> I don't know how this thing got mirrored. Um, and I haven't been able to figure out how not to mirror it. But he owned a gas station here. And he helped them and all like that. And my daddy had a strong stomach. And he said that was horrible. But we lived, when you go to go west on Interstate 210 Loop, 
Louisiana Avenue going up. That was where we lived. Across the street was LaGrange High School. So everybody was told that we were being evacuated and they had just adopted me. And they had we had to go to LaGrange High School. And then the sawing went off and everybody had to get into the hallway. All the glass in the high school shattered. People were cut and everything like that. And I barely remember some of it. We get home and daddy had a porch, a glass porch. They had one, two, three, four, five, six windows and a glass door to it. Not a window broken. He had these big old maple trees and oak trees. None of them broken, nothing. Just like a block and a half away. We crossed the street. We crossed into my cousin's yard and there was our yard. Nothing. No damage at all. But it hit the schoolhouse. And they say, well, the schoolhouse would have been more protective. Yeah, it would have. But so many people got hurt because so many was packed in there. And uh, I guess that's, see, we, we stayed here for Laura. It was only three miles less in force to become in a Category 5. Now they're thinking about putting a Category 6 up. And I'm like, anything after 5, you better run and tuck your tail in, you know? Hide your head in a hole. But we made it through Laura. Then we left because we didn't have anything. Then for Delta, we went to leave. We only got 15 minutes away, which took us two and a half hours. And the dog, the stop, start. I was getting sick. The dogs were sort. I told Wolf, I said, take the next exit. We're going back home. We were home in 18 minutes. And we ran through. I tell you what, a hurricane coming through at night is better than seeing it coming through a day. At night, you can kind of sleep. You can kind of, you know. Yeah, I've been through enough of them. Um, when you look, live in Louisiana, either towards New Orleans or Lake Charles where I live, that's mostly where the hurricanes hit. It's like living in Florida. See all the hurricanes hit through there? Actually, Hurricane Andrew went through Florida, kind of lost power, and then went into the Gulf of Mexico, which is pretty deep hit warm water and it built up again it was a i think a category two by the time it got back over here you survive it you expect what's going to be no electricity no water you start back then it was glass jugs crock pots that they used to put the vegetables in to make the pickles to make you know cucumbers to make pickles and stuff We'd fill up anything we could with water back then because we were on a well and it needed electricity for water. Now, in town, still needed water. You have to flush the toilets and stuff, you know? Yeah. Daddy had four rows, an acre wide. Full of cucumbers, and what he did, he put a metal fence up with some posts that let them go on the ground, and they grew like crazy. He'd use cow manure mixed with rabbit manure, and the pickles would. Oh, he bought the ones that were thin and long. Then for us just to eat in salads, the cucumbers in salads, he'd get the short, small, you know, fatter ones. So. We would wash them and get all the little spiky things off of them and clean them real good. And we soak them in water for about a week to two weeks with salt. Then we drain them and wipe them and put them in the vinegar that either had, well, they had different seeds in it. Okay. Herbs and stuff in it. But one stayed with salt. The other one, which was dill pickles, the other one, Daddy put a two-pound sack of sugar in it, and that was sweet pickles. Now, we did the bread and butter pickle, which was half sweet, half salting. <laughs> I used to be able to do all that. My uncle, he had 
jar here had this little roll coil or the straight little clear tubing. And then this was full of yeast, sugar. Yeah, something like that. The other one was the fruits. So as the yeast and sugar and you add a little bit of water would start bubbling, it go up the tube, you could see it. And it hit into that other one. They they made all their homemade wine, muscadine, um, grape, three different kinds of grapes. Uh, he made a watermelon rind wine. I had never heard of their taste. Boy, it was good. Um, strawberry, raspberry, peach, all kinds of wines. And the thing was, I remember how they did it. But my best thing was <clears throat> I got to put the labels on it. They'd handwrite the label with the date on it and what it was. And then hit the cork and with that little rubber mallet, you know, I enjoyed doing that. Daddy would make the homemade beers and I'd put the cap on it. And then he had me put the labels on it. He made some peach beer and I thought, ugh. Tasted it. That was so good. They made apple and I didn't like it very much. No, we're Cajun. One weekend with the family, everything was gone. <laughs> um, now, Pop Pop, like my daddy's dad, liked to make the whiskey. Now, that he would sell. Now, the white lightning, moonshine, whatever you want to call it. That they would sell too. But not for alcohol. They sold it to the healers in the bayous. So they could put it on wounds and stuff like that. They wouldn't drink it either. Now y'all are saying, wait a minute. Nope. Remember, what is white lightning or moonshine? 102, 110% alcohol. No, it's just life-wise. It's things I've experienced, you know. Just like if you're out in the open and you cut yourself and it's hard to bleed, it's bleeding and you don't have enough gauze or anything, find some spider webs. Kind of stick, just make sure there's no bugs in it or a spider. You take it, break the two leaves or whatever it's on, take it to another one. It's sticky. You kind of fold it in half and then you wrap it around wherever it's cut it sells it the stickiness is like super glue did you know you can super glue if it's not bleeding too bad super glue a cut and it's going to be like liquid stitches and i didn't know that until jimmy my cousin was talking about that one time I went, what? And then when we went to Florida, I said, oh, yeah, we keep super glue around here a lot for cuts. They used it in Vietnam. When they scrape themselves or cut them, they clean it real good, and then they use that super glue and then hold it together. Can you imagine? Jimmy said many a times they did that. Many a times. And he said, um, we use ma maggots on the bayou. Granny Up was always looking for dead animals to get fresh maggots. That's the larvas of the flies. Maggots, if you've got a sore, it will only eat the infected part. It does not like living flesh. Mm-hmm. It would actually eat a boil up, but it won't eat the skin around it. So she had her little, looked like a carved cup, and she had a cock, cork in it, and she'd send the boys or whatever. She had three bells. One was for one of the boys to come and get some maggots. One was to look for a king snake. Now, she had a king snake. But every once in a while, she needed to refresh her king snakes. King snakes will bite you. They will also heal you. 
That's what I learned. I'm not tell you ask your doctor to help heal you. This is what was done in the older days. I'm 68, almost 69 years old. This is what the Cajuns did on the bayous to heal. Do you know for severe sprained ankles or knees or backs, she would use a king snake. And it helped with the pain. It helped the sore muscles and stuff. I was amazed at what I learned on the bayous. Spanish moss, you wash it out and clean it out real good. And you mix a little bit of what we call swamp mud. It has a little bit of that green mossy stuff in it. And you put that in there, you fold it up, then you put it in a clean rag. And you put it on a, like, uh, a cut or a spring ankle or something like that. And you wrap the leg in it. It'll actually draw the poison out of it and keep it from getting gangrene. There's many roots she had hanging from her ceiling. There was jars with all kinds of stuff in it. And when you opened it up, you knew it had been stored in moonshine. You'd go, but really moonshine is almost just pure alcohol. Like the alcohol you buy today? That's almost what moonshine used to be. Now, I don't know what it is today. I don't know if they're still making it in the hills, which I'm probably they would. Or even in the bayous, which I think the deeper you go into the bayous in Louisiana, you would find it. As far as Kentucky and Tennessee and the mountains, I'm sure the hillbillies, like they call themselves, still do this. There's not that many doctors around. You go in the bayou, you better carry everything you need in case you get stranded. And see, a lot of times when I was growing up, you'd see one rag hanging here and it was in a bow. And you could grow down, there's another one. And then there would be a little outlet, you know, a little bayou going that way. And then you could see it there. And... You would follow it. Granny, they knew Granny always used red ribbons. She would take fabric and they give her fabric. They dye it, the white cotton fabric, and they dye it. And I'm wondering sometimes if they didn't dye it with blood. I would beets maybe, red beets. I don't know. You could see some green, you know. So they knew which, what to take. Because even the Bayou people said, if you don't know exactly where you're going and learned it, or you have something tied to a tree, you don't want to be on the bayous at night. Talk about creatures come out after you. They love to crawl and eat at night. You think daytime, the gators and stuff, gators will attack a boat at night. Sometimes you're in the daytime. But a gator off of the line that's looking for something to eat and there's nothing there, they'll attack a boat, especially the flat bottom P row boats. They were dangerous back then. Now we had just a regular aluminum boat, and I'd look and the water, here's the rim of the boat, and the water was like right there to it. And you never put your hand down in the waters. Never. You never know when a snake or something, and especially we had to watch when we were going into a little inlet or cutlet, and you went through some uh, moss and some low-lying limbs, we watched for snakes. They liked to get out of the water so they would get in the trees, and if you went up underneath and disturbed them, they'd drop into the boat. And a lot of them, it was cotton mouth, which is... Uh, moccasin water moccasins and they had rattlesnakes they had tree snakes rat snakes they had uh king snakes you name it it was out there spiders would even drop on you and a lot of them was deadly so you had to know where you lived you had to know what to survive and how to call a neighbor if you need it. 
Back then, they didn't have phones out there. When we went for the first time, when I was going out there for the first time, we stopped in a cabin. We walked in the first room. It was only eight foot wide. The first room had, looked like the chessboard had not been touched in years. So much dust on it. And they had the little table with two little chairs. On this side had a little chair. And they had some kind of box. Had a wire going up. And I knew they had an antenna. I said, oh, okay. And my cousin Jean said, uh-uh. You got to crank it. I went, what? And I looked. I thought it was a music box. I was cranking it. It's a ham radio. And for emergencies, that's the shack they would go to. And they crank that thing up and try to get to someone else. Um, there was bell systems. And if you think, well, it's not good. Sound on water travels. Eight, nine, ten miles up the bayou. If they were ringing that bell and rang it long enough, they would hear it that far and they'd be coming with boats. I met baby for the first time. Who's baby? I found out a black panther. My cousin was closing the shit, the shutters to the window. I said, it's hot tonight. You'd rather be hot and sweaty than baby gets you. Who's baby? You'll hear after a while you hear. And then you heard it like a woman scream. A black panther. I went. I'm going to sleep underneath the bed. <laughs> and it was hot, y'all. It was hot. When we first got there, he told me about Grandpa. Grandpa was a gator without any teeth. And when we fished, everybody would leave the skulls of the fish on the porch so Grandpa could eat them. So he didn't have to try to catch them. The outhouse in the back used to be just kind of out there, but they closed that in because of baby and mosquitoes and stuff. And when we walked in there, the first room was, like I said, it had the little crank radio and then it had the chair with the checkers and we didn't even play checkers. We just left it. Next room was two bunk beds, one on each side, you know, two beds and just barely enough room to get in between. The next one was a little bit longer, which was the kitchen. It had a pot belly stove and then it had cabinets. And when I went up to open up a cabinet, raccoon jumps out. To go to the bathroom, I said, what's in there? First time I had ever seen an outhouse. I had heard about them and read about them. He says, well, I need to go in there. I got to spray this stuff in there and Look yucky. It was something brown. I said, what is that? He said, you don't want to know what's in here. Spiders hate it. Snakes hate it. So you're going to be safe. I went, spiders? Snakes? Ugh. I said, and people lived like this? He said, oh, yeah, people lived like this. All up and down the bayous. Now, remember, this is the 60s that I was learning on the bayous, the earlier 60s. And then I learned for four years. Every summer I went to the bayou. And uh, one time I had to stitch someone up. Uh, yeah. You know what Granny did? His leg had been cut open, bleeding pretty bad, and she prayed over it. She didn't touch it. She prayed over it. And then she cleaned it with some of the white lightning. And he's like, oh, oh, you know. And then he says, Granny, do I need to ring the bell for so-and-so? She said, I got someone right here that can do it. I went, what? She says, well, I got a whole, she called them uh, picks. I went, what are picks? So she grabbed the box out, opened it up. And they were, it looked like the Chinese puts in people's bodies. She says, I got to place these in three areas and I have to make sure they stay there. You're going to have to sew it up. I went, Ooh, no, granny, I can't. Yes, you can. And I did. Once and I, sorry. 
chicken shit. Yeah. Because that needle was not a needle like, like you would think of needle and thread. It was like a very, 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 very thin piece of bamboo. Sharpened. And a hole on the end. And it was more or less... I would say like a Spanish moss piece or something. One time I know she used her mule's tail, a hair from his tail. She put it in the white lightning and then she started stitching up. And I'm like, you're kidding. You're kidding. Then the next year before we went, my aunt and I went to see Old Yeller. I had not seen it. It had been out two or three times, but we went and saw it one Sunday. And when old Yeller was hurt, the mama told the kid to go get one or two of pieces of the tail. I told my aunt, hey, Jean, that's what the old granny made me do. They used it to sew with. They couldn't get cotton thread all the time. Even when they made their quilts, they used horse or mule hair from the tail. It was long, you know, and they could. I learned a lot of stuff. I wish our children today could do that instead of playing, you know, on the uh, the TV games all the time or Xbox, whatever they call it. I learned a lot. I don't mind passing it along. That's I think that's why I was taught it. I've seen in two days where the man stayed and Granny put him in the cot and I had to sleep on the floor where his leg had been cut really bad. It was starting to get gangrene and she put those maggots, she cleaned it and put the maggots on it and Put a white cloth around it. In two days, she unwrapped it and she washed it out, and all you could see was the cut. Then she sewed it up. All the infection was gone. It wasn't red. It wasn't blue or purple like we would think it would be. Mm -mm. It was just as clean as could be. All she had to do was stitch it up. She made her own lye soap. And when she'd make her soap, she'd pray over it. Now, a lot of people made their own soaps out, the old lie and stuff. But they would come to Granny, that old Granny, to get her soap because she prayed over it. And um, they're big in prayers and spiritual in there. They never did any of the bad voodoo. Nothing like that. Nothing dark or evil. The only thing I learned about the voodoo is to make the grigri bags, G-R-I-S, G-R-I-S, grigri bags. It was made with either white or off-white linen. It could have been a flour sack at one time or whatever. And we would put different things in it. Those different things, like it is like a medicine pouch for a Native American uh wouldn't put sage but they would put like spanish moss a piece of tree moss sometime a piece of the cattails that were growing all over the place um if you had lost a tooth and you still had the tooth they put the tooth in the grigri bag um she would go out walking see if she could find some little pebbles or something and she'd put her hand over it like this and she'd pray and she'd find the one and she'd put it in that little bag then she'd tie it up and they were to stick it in their pocket or tie it to their belt buckles and a belt I mean and 90 percent of the men had ropes around their waist they didn't use the leather like that not like we do today they thought it was a waste a lot of them wore suspenders handmade they tied the knot, put the rope around them, and somebody would tie the knot in the back and then on this side, or you'd see it this way. And 90% of them would wear 
overalls. They didn't wear just blue jeans and a shirt. They wear overalls. It was so hot and muggy on the bayous. You wore as little as possible. And hold on a minute, people. Sorry for the intrusion, people. I don't have that in my room. Um, but you get used to. When we were still living here, but we were building, the everybody had two acres. One in the front, one in the back. They took half the acre in the back and would plant rows of vegetables. This one planted so much. Then the next one, because it was like a family unit. And uh, we'd go out there and my grandpa would bring these gallons and gallons and gallons of water to water the garden. He said, oh, the cucumbers are nice. Let's, you want a cucumber? Said, yeah. And I went to wash it and my grandfather said, uh-uh, you're going to be a country girl. You got to be a country girl. And I looked up at him and I remember I had ponytails and they were hitting my shoulders. And he said, you take the cucumber and you roll it on your jeans. I said, I ain't got jeans. I got shorts. Well, roll it on your shorts. And when you rolled it, it didn't only take the little sticker off of it. It had little stickers sometimes on it or little bumps, whatever you want to call it. We took the dirt off. He said, now eat it. I went, ooh. He said, wait a minute. He took out his pocket. Now, he cut the end of the cucumber. He rubbed it like this and then cut that end and then the other in the same way. He said, that takes the bitterness out. And you know, I've learned that and I do it all the time. And I never have a bitter cucumber unless it's just too old. But since I've had Crohn's since 2010, I don't have cucumbers anymore. I used to take the cucumber, slice it long ways, and I cut the inside out with the seeds out. But now the, I still can't have the cucumbers. But I take a piece and my pop-up said, you make a chaw out of it. I'm like, what you mean? He said to keep you from getting thirsty, you need to make saliva. He said, so you take that little piece, stick it in the side of your mouth, and don't chew it. Just suck on it like you do a throat lozenger. Okay. You know, we never got thirsty. Now, we did drink water, but it does. And then it turns rubbery. Almost like rubber. You don't eat it afterwards. You just spit it out. And I've learned a lot from my grandfather and them. But that's what happens when you get my age and you've... You grew up like that. My grandfather could look at a chicken egg and he'd look like this and then he'd hold it up to the sun and he'd look at it and he'd kind of measure it with his fingers. He said, that's going to be a rooster. Put it in that box. That could be a hen. He says, I'm very seldom wrong. So he'd take another one. Yes, I do. And I have great grandchildren. But they don't want to know any of this. All they want to know is um I'm trying to fix my pill. There it is. Um <laughs> video games. Um now I have taught a lot of people. I was in Boy Scouts for 13 and a half years. I was one of the higher up. Yeah, I guess it is in a way, and it, is, it isn't in another way. I mean, I'm getting older. Um, I've got about 80 grandkids, or 80 kids, I should say. They still, with Boy Scouts, we made a lot of friends, and a lot of them would call me mom off to the side because they were from a broken home. A lot of time they came to me with their problems. Some of them had learning disabilities like I did. So I knew, 
Yeah, can you imagine? 42 boys one November. I had just put my Christmas tree up. The wind blew. They were supposed to have a thing at my house, and they had set all the tents up. About two hours later, a storm came through, was blowing tents away. I had 42 boys sleeping in my living room, and one climbed my eight-foot Christmas tree and knocked it over. It was nothing for me to cook for 40 or 50 people on a weekend, on a training weekend. Nah, it's just something I did. I love to do things like that. We would have, I catered and I had my own gift shop and I worked. I've done all kinds of stuff. I helped daddy even build houses for a while. Even with one hand missing, he would take his hook and he'd put the hook there. He'd take the nail in his left hand. Then he'd take that hook and take the hammer and ding, ding, ding. Then he put the hook down, his hook, his prosthesis, and he'd take the hammer and go whack, whack. In three whacks, he had a 16-penny nail through and through. I'm like, took me a little bit longer than that and, you know, stuff. But, yeah, I helped him build my house. I, he taught me all how to electric, put electricity in a house without putting a jump somewhere. He taught me how to do all the little outlets and how to wire um, lamps and stuff like that. He showed me how to plumb, do plumbing and stuff like that. Always did. Um, thank you very much. Um, Daddy taught me how to square things. This house is not square. Where we live, my ex-husband's. Uh, it's the second house, but we turned it into a duplex. Um, it's nothing square in this house. Nothing. But daddy taught me how to square off a house and how to read one of those things that you could make the points, markers and stuff. Uh, taught me how, why to dig a chain wall for concrete and stuff. If you're going to have a two-story building, you need it extra wide and extra deep, you know, and stuff like that. Taught me how to mix up uh, paint, cement. Taught me how to put up vinyl, sheetrock, paneling, the whole shebang. He even taught me how to lay down tiles for a floor. And I just kind of, I don't know. I was daddy's baby girl, but he taught me everything he knew. When I was younger, my first puzzle was one he made me. He took a piece of plywood and he glued this picture that was in a magazine. Then he put some shellac on it. Then he used a saw and he cut it like this, you know, and then I was able to push daddy. Yeah, my dad and my mother was both an angel. And on some of the videos you're going to see with people there, putting voices to my mom and she, they're both past but they're still right here with me it's like sometime I can I have some videos of them daddy used to do the eight millimeter you know reel to reel movies they have no sound but I have all that I lost a few of them through the hurricanes but I do have some videos yes I do and then I have a DVD that I took those little eight millimeter films and they're mostly black and white and it's on a DVD. Yeah. We were Cajuns. On Sundays, Saturday night, we would call everybody up tomorrow morning, come for biscuits, bacon, or crackling one of the two and then we'd have orange juice and coffee scrambled eggs and grits once in a while we had oatmeal but it was already spread out when everybody got there we all ate breakfast and then we all cleaned up and you could take what you wanted sometime if we didn't have biscuits we had pancakes 
or waffles. So the family would get together because some of them was coming from out of town, you know, stuff. So we'd get there different times. Mom and dad had a double garage. And I remember Mr. Harrington would come with his accordion and stuff. Or Mr. Doucette. And they played the accordion and stuff like that. And they'd be dancing. My uncle was from Bunky, Louisiana, which we call a Yankee Cajun. Okay. <laughs> um. Really, it was hours away. That's, I don't know how him and my aunt ever met because he was from Bunky and she was from Rain, about three hours apart, you know. But they met, they married. He was in the Navy, he retired Navy, Navy, and they were doing the twist. And Uncle Henry, Nankari, which means Uncle Henry, said, I can't do that dance. I said, you can do the two-step. He said, yeah, but I don't know how to dance that dance. So I went in my mom's bathroom. I got two towels. I told my uncle, I said, put it like you'd be doing your butt out of the shower. He said, what? I said, take it, pat, put it around you and hold it, okay? I said, now, twist this way and twist that way, but twist your butt at the same time. And he was trying to twist. In the, I said, no, in the opposite direction. And my mama got so mad, it was her good towels we were using. Then everybody went got towels. Some of that is on there. Some of them is it. Um, Daddy had two big rolls, and they said they couldn't get any. It had been spliced too many times. That's what I wish we could have gotten was the camp my dad did. Now, on one of them, there's a little bit of the camp. But the camp out, it used to be called the, the ferry. Uh, there was a little ferry. Calcasieu River at that time was a little bit wider and deeper than it is now. Now it's just a little bit tranquil. But they used to have a ferry go across, and they had a white building there, and that was Dad's camp. Everybody would come out on Friday and stay until Sunday, and then they'd go home. We'd have barbecues and fish fries and, uh, but it was a lot of work. Mama would get there on Fridays and we had to open up everything. And I remember sweeping out dead bugs uh, and knocking down spider webs and stuff like that. But it was cleaned up by the time we went to bed. Um, there's a few stories there. They don't know if it was a bear or a Bigfoot, but they shot at it. They found some reddish brown fur, but it was short. It wasn't long, so we don't know what it was. But at night, we would close the windows down, and we wouldn't allow anything. They would were locked down completely. And I always wondered why. Well, we didn't know what was coming around the camp. Um. I have a little proportion of that camp where my cousin is dancing and my uncle, mom's brother, is pinching her with his toes or he's pinching her or something like that. My cousin, growing up, not right now, but when Sally Fields was young and she was young, she's in there. She's got big old curlers in her hair. She looked like Sally Fields and she sounded like her. They said, you know, there's always somebody, a double of you somewheres. And we kept picking at her all those years. It's good to remember some of the memories. A lot of memories. I miss my family. My whole family's gone. Um... My adopted dad and mom was third. Each of them was third cousins to my natural mother. And they adopted us out. Dad died in 2002. And mom died in 2005. 2006. I was living here. Miss Selma knocked on the door and she says, Barbara, I need to give you this. Your mama wanted you to have this. 
Said, what is it? She said, it's a letter for you. No, she couldn't see. And she didn't know how to type. So we typed it. And Miss Velma had handed me the letter. And the letter was closed. And it had mom's signature on it. And then mom's signature was on the letter. I like to have died. And then I didn't know what to think. For many years, my daddy would say, you're my little girl. You've always been my little girl. You're my flesh and blood, you know. And I always thought because we were related to my natural mother, they were third cousins, that that's what he meant. You know, blood family. And um, let's see if I can move this. There we go. Uh, it don't want to say it's not. There, there we go. And... I always thought that. Now, the night, it's not going to stay up there. Let's see if I can tighten this up. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Nope. If it falls, I'm sorry. The night they picked Daddy up at the house in the ambulance, the ambulance driver came to me and said, Are you... sorry, sorry, everybody. I wish I could do more. Uh, let's see. Maybe like that. Um, I went to the ambulance and daddy could, was trying to take his mask off. So he took his nub like this and pulled his oxygen mask off. I said, oh, daddy, you need that. He says, I want to tell you, you've always been my little girl. You always will be. You're my blood. Don't forget that. Hello, Dave. Welcome back to the room. And then. I put his mask back on the oxygen because he couldn't breathe. He had pneumonia. But he also had asbestosis and methicillioma, whatever. And um, that was the Saturday night. Dad died the Monday. In the letter, it states that Daddy was my true dad. And Mama, I have one letter. It was hard for me to understand why they couldn't. Hi, everybody coming in. Why, Daddy? And see, my grandfather would tell me the same thing. And my grandmother in French, you're a little girl. You're not theirs. You're ours. It's like, you know, I don't know how to say it. Disturbing at times. Then... It was like a shock to me. Doing fine. Doing fine. Just a little bit of allergies. Tonight I'm not in much pain. Thank God for that. In Jesus' name. For three days I have suffered so bad. But today it doesn't feel like I'm doing that much suffering. Um, so in the letter it explained. You're celebrating the holidays over here in Portland. What holidays? Um, Easter? Was it Easter? Uh, I've had cancer surgery. Um, I've, all, I've always had allergies. I've always been on allergy shots or pills. And then they found cancer. They re removed part of it. Then they had to send me to Baton Rouge removed the rest of it, and then this past year I had some of the 420. Yeah, well, we don't do that either. <laughs> when you put 420, that's what they had put in earlier. Now, for them not to, I'm not deleting you, okay? I'm just deleting your message. Uh, let's see. There it is. Okay. I don't want to get tagged on that. <laughs> um, so mama got sick after she died in 2005. Wolf and I got married in 2008. And I had just gotten another letter. Miss Markintel, see, we were all lifetime members at the VFW Ladies Auxiliary. Uh, out on Country Club 121, VFW 21, I don't know, 2130, I think. 
I got a silver bowl up there from it. Um, so they had looked in her box when she died and they saw my mom's name with my name on it and it was a letter. So one of the ladies brought it to me. She said, here's a letter for you. I went, what is it? Mama, I've already got one letter. She said, well, Miss Zelma probably gave you the first one. Your mama wanted to make sure that you knew what you wanted. And I think Miss Markintel was the second one that wrote or typed it up. I said, thank you very much. You want to come in for coffee? Uh-uh, I got to go. Now, we had a fire. One was the one I had just gotten. And I had been rereading it. And I don't know. We had a fire in the trailer. And I did find the metal box that we had kept some letters in and one of the letters is still here both letters said the same thing just worded a little different hey wolf glad you came in so you know and people says i look like my dad uh some says well you do but you don't had a different mother, you know. I mean, I'm going to be, you know, my natural mother was one half Apache. She never told us kids that. But if you look at my two sisters, my two half sisters, and you look at me, when I had all my hair and I would keep it dark, I was always putting red tints in it. I look Native American. See, I got the thing here but here had a little bit more of my dad's chin but he was at part attack in port cherokee my mother when i told my half brothers and sisters when i found out that our grandfather had written me the letter and stuff we remembered at my mother's funeral in 92, two Native American men came and Alan chased them away with the cops. And if he would not have put that in the letter he sent me, I wouldn't have believed it. And I do remember in a day in 1989... No, it had to have been the first of 1990 when we moved in my aunt's house after she died. I remember a Native American man coming to the door and asking for me. But my husband, my first husband said, no, nah, get out of here. And he had to follow what my husband did. It was his house. He could not call out to me to go meet him or nothing. He says all this. And I remembered it. Well, I didn't know what it was about, but he was my grandfather. He was my mother's dad. Sorry. Some of this just to have known family, but yet not know family. I'm glad I met my mother, my real mother, but I hated to meet Alan, her boyfriend, husband, whatever. We have up and down in our families. All of us do. We wish for good things or we, bad things happen. We pray or we wish for more. We say, oh, we don't have any luck. I call myself a jinx a lot. But I've learned that what I've been through in my life through Jesus Christ, God has given me strength and courage to go through it. And I'm still going through it. And I'm hoping, as y'all can see, anyhow I'm sick, anyhow I get mad, or any whatever happens, me doing crafts, getting tired, whatever, things I enjoy I'd like to share with you. Because I never know when God's going to call me home. He may call any of you home before me. But I do know that I have so many ailments and medical problems 
that I may go before any of y'all. So what little bit I know, if I pass it on, one day maybe you'll remember. You'll tell your grandkids or something like that. Maybe you'll be able to use it in your own life. Remember, we're to like each other. We're to try to understand each other. Be friends with each other. Be nice to each other. And try to share with each other. So I am very tired. I'm a little over my hour. And if the others would come in, I would have probably forced myself to stay up for two hours. But I can't. Um, it's okay to talk about it. Whatever you feel. But be in the right room for it. Know that the people that will talk to you will understand you. May help you. My email's up there if y'all need help or need to talk. I'll get through you through email. I reopened it because one of the investigators asked me to reopen it. Okay. Thank you for coming in. May God bless you in the name of the blood of Jesus Christ. Keep you safe and out of danger and harm. Have his angels surround you while you work and to take care of you. Everybody, that goes for everybody. Everybody in the world. May God bless y'all, heal y'all. May his shine as light upon you so you can find your path share his grace with you so you can feel love and understanding and you can forgive in jesus name i thank you lord everybody y'all have a great night i'm out of here blessings to each of you <laughs>